Hey, what's up guys? Chief Pat here and today bringing you guys a brand new Clash Royale video and today we're going to be trying out the giant balloon combination on my main account. I actually haven't used this combination since the game first came out, actually even before it came out and I saw it for the first time when visiting Supercell headquarters. It made sense just to pair the giant and the balloon together and I haven't used it since then but due to the fact that giant is so strong right now inside of the game, you guys have probably seen a lot of giant balloon combinations, giant hog rider, giant minions, giant everything just because because the giant is just so tanky. Uh, so I thought I would use it inside of a couple of battles in my main account, see if I can still pull it off. I might be a little bit rusty with the balloon, uh, but let's go ahead and start it off by facing off against Rubo. So very beginning, I'm gonna play my giant in the very back. You can see he went for a little bit of a counter push um, as well as he's gonna play some minions to defend against those barbarians. Things are still looking okay, and with the giant doing so much damage per hit, might be able to get a shot or two off against the tower, even though the barbarians are beating him down. And uh, so far, so good. We got that tower down. About 600 HP with just the giant taking two punches, and the barbarians will die due to the princess, so no harm, no foul in the very beginning of the battle. Now, we do have the balloon prepped, but you have to find the right time to play it. If you play a bad balloon, it definitely uh, can affect the outcome of the battle significantly. It's definitely a risky card because it doesn't damage any troops besides the fact that it has a little bit of explosion damage when it gets taken out. So I'm going to wait to play it just at the right time, and if I don't even have to play it during a battle, that's definitely something I'm going to look to do. So if I have to use giant minion pushes, if I have to use barbarian minion pushes, I don't think this guy has a fireball. I haven't seen it just yet, and I know with the barbarians I played on his royal GG, that probably would have been the time for him to play it. So let's go and play skeletons and arrows to stop this hog rider, as well as the minions, and I'm actually just going to do a little bit of a counter push with the giant, and we should be able to do work against this tower. Now you can see the tower locked onto my giant, which is really good. That's going to give my minions just a little bit of time to damage that tower. They probably did like about a thousand damage or something like that um, in the span of like two or three seconds because the princess couldn't shoot fast enough to take it out. So things are looking really good. The tower's all the way down to 875. I'll drop a skeletons to make sure that the goblins don't reach my tower. And as soon as the princess gets close enough, barbarians should take a single hit, but that's gonna work pretty well. And now my minions can come charging down the lane. All right, so his own barbarians will stop me as well as a zap. Not gonna kill my minions though. They're gonna keep tearing through those barbarians. Meanwhile, down the right-hand lane, I feel like this left tower is pretty good. I'll just arrow down the remainder of his troops and get ready uh, to do a little bit of a counter push. Barbarians to stop his push, only a single shot with the hog. And uh, he actually is gonna bring out the minion horde. He hasn't played the minion horde in the entire battle. So that was a little bit of a surprise, but still everything's okay. And you can notice with 30 seconds left in the battle, I haven't even played the balloon yet. The balloon is just a situational card and I really haven't found the opportunity to play it especially for the fact that this guy is running both minions as well as minion horde. Uh, so just having my giants beat down the tower over and over and over again, I'm not worried about those minions on the right hand side because they're only gonna do about five to 600 damage. Let's drop some prediction arrows to see if he drops anything special, but it turns out he doesn't even have his minion horde ready. And that should be the game with 10 seconds left for a pretty simple one crown to zero victory. There's the very first balloon for, of the game. You can see it's running towards the tower. And if it reaches the tower, we'll get that second crown, but it looks like it's not gonna do that. But that one was more of a giant minion game just for the fact that the balloon I didn't really find a great opportunity to play it I just slowly chipped him down with the giant and a couple of my counter pushes to pull out the win but let's go and get into another battle this time against Cassiopeia who is a level 11 but if you look at Cassiopeia's cards they're fully maxed out level 13s as well as the princess is level 4 so I know a lot of people they try to just upgrade the cards they use in their decks so their level is lower and they look cooler when they fight people uh, and they can BM people when they beat someone two levels higher than them even though their card levels are the exact same. I feel like that's the sort of the situation here, but as you can see, card levels are completely even for this battle, and let's go ahead and charge towards the tower. Giant's gonna take it, get taken out by the Barbarian, uh, but still, things are looking pretty good so far. We've got the Elixir Pump down, which is really important, and the Giant, or the Barbarian, should die to the Princess as well as the Tower. I've got another Elixir Pump in my hand, depending on what he does, um, so let's just go ahead and play that right now. Get a little bit greedy with that pump, and to see what Cassiopeia can do to respond. Now, he hasn't played anything just yet, which means he's at a pretty massive of elixir disadvantage. I'm actually going to drop the barbarians to save my princess right there. She's three elixir value, so obviously keeping her alive is a great idea. Minions are going to go down. They actually will avoid that fire or that, uh, yeah, those fire spirits, which is really good. The zap won't be able to take out my princess as well. Look at how much value I'm getting for that level four princess. The level four princess has been doing work the entire battle, and uh, now I'm just going to drop a balloon to try to rush down the tower. So the very first giant balloon push that I've done so far in this video, let's drop our arrows to stop the minions. I might miss one minion right there, but still, Balloon's gonna reach the tower, and uh, with his King Tower and his Crown Tower trying to take that Balloon down, I'm 
I'm still gonna get another shot off on the King Tower, two shots off on the King Tower, and it's all the way down to 1993. Shout out to anyone who's 22 years old or whatever was born inside in 1993. Anyways, let's continue the battle. I don't have a great counter to the Knight and the Fire Spirits. I'm just gonna drop the Barbarians. It's five Elixir for five Elixir right there, so really, honestly, not too terrible of a trade. And uh, with a minute left inside of this battle, I know the game's pretty much over. Let's drop the Giant, let's drop the Balloon, let's go straight for the Tower. I haven't seen a defensive building just yet, so I'm not sure exactly what he's gonna do. Arrows are gonna plop down on the side to try to kill that Princess, but of course he does have the Minions, and the Balloon's gonna rush down the Tower, get a single shot off before taking it all all the way down to 178 and a one last I think actually two sets of arrows or maybe even just a single balloon running towards the tower will wrap up the game let's drop the balloons let's drop the arrows the prediction arrows to try to get those minions down which we will do and that's going to wrap up a three crown to zero victory against Cassiopeia for a pretty simple win so good stuff right there always very nice to get the balloon to the tower which we did on our very first giant balloon push again you do not want to waste your balloon pushes because you're definitely going to be in for a nasty counter attack as soon as your opponent figures out what's up but let's hop into another battle against Lolket, do the same exact thing, and to hopefully be able to control this match. So a standard start with Elixir Collectors, his in the center, mine behind my bottom right tower, and uh, things should be okay so far. I've got the giant, I've got the balloon in my hand. Let's get ready for a giant balloon push down the right-hand lane. Always drop your balloon about a half second after your giant, um, just to make sure your balloon doesn't take tower damage. And my balloon's gonna run all the way to the tower. I've got the minions, which are gonna help out as well, and now the balloon's gonna start hammering away. We've got one one shot off on the tower. Looks like we're gonna get a second shot. That Ice Wizard is crazy how much it's slowing it down. So two shots onto the tower, bringing it all the way down to 515. And then now we just have to play a little bit of tower defense on our side of the map. So notice my placements. I've got the skeletons and barbarians trying to stay as far back as possible um, to potentially bring my other tower in range, but mainly just try to defend as best as possible. I've got the giant to stop the prince. If you guys don't have a great counter to a prince or a P.E.K.K.A., you can always drop a giant to be fat and in its way. Uh, more so the prince than the, than the P.E.K.K.A. that you'll drop a giant into, but still able to defend the tower. He does have that P.E.K.K.A. down, which I will have to deal with, so let's drop some minions. Let's get ready to drop our skeletons to stop that P.E.K.K.A. in its tracks, and uh, with his zap spell ar having already been played, we can drop our skeletons, then our barbarians, and uh, things are looking good so far inside of this battle. I don't have much direct damage with this deck. I only have the arrows, so keep that in mind. Not a great way to have to finish the game um, if that's what I need to do, but still, he's got a baby dragon and a nice wizard onto the tower. I'll just play a single princess to be able to cut down that attack, take a little bit of damage against my tower. But with a minute and 15 left in the game, we can drop another pump, set up for our next push, and hopefully be the one to end the game. Now, this is where he goes in. He's like, hey, he's gonna play his pump. Rather than pump up, I'm gonna be aggressive. So I'm gonna make him pay for that. We've got the minions and the skeletons stopping that nine elixir push with the prince and the mini P.E.K.K.A. That's a crazy amount of value right there. And I feel like that's pretty much the game. As my minions flow all the way across and end up taking that tower uncontested. So he didn't even care about that tower, which is a pretty big mistake with my deck being so weak to get that final couple of damage points against the tower but keep in mind he doesn't even have a defense if you wanted to defend his tower from my balloon he only has the elixir collector to stop it and make it change its path but meanwhile balloons all the way onto the tower it's only going to get one shot off unfortunately but meanwhile the barbarians and the minions are going to take out um, the mini P or the pekka before it can even leave the tower and at this point arrow's going to go down going to drop my minions as well to stop this prince balloons floating all the way to the tower and it won't end up getting that shot feels bad man but still things are definitely in our favor for the last 15 seconds of the battle. So a desperate attempt to get that second crown of the game. We tried our best, guys, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. With seven seconds left, the balloon is flying all the way over. He's going to play an elixir collector. He doesn't feel like giving me his crown chest, so I'll give him a thumbs up. And uh, that's going to wrap up a one crown to zero victory against Lolget. That almost certainly would have been two crowns if we just had a couple more seconds inside of the battle. So that one counter push he made with the Prince as well as the Mini P.E.K.K.A. is how we ended up stealing that win. Um, not really a steal because we sort of had it locked up throughout the entire battle, but the fact that he spent nine Elixir on a Mini P.E.K.K.A. P.E.K.K.A. or Mini P.E.K.K.A. Prince push that we were able to counter with only Skeletons and Minions for four Elixir, that means we pretty much got a free Elixir Collector down and uh, there was almost nothing he could do throughout the rest of the battle. So one more battle against Giant Tears. You can see I'm actually dropping Giant Balloon, but I make a little bit of a mistake. The Balloon goes down too quickly, so it actually ends up not working out. That Balloon gets targeted by the Minion Horde, so a pretty terrible start to this game so far. I'm also gonna take a hit, or two hits from the Prince on the right-hand side, or left-hand side, meanwhile, 
on the right hand side. I'm taking damage from the minions as well as the Dark Prince. This is just a pretty ugly battle so far. Just a really terrible giant, giant balloon push in the very beginning. He had the perfect counter in the minion horde and uh, this one is going to be a struggle. Actually a really well played princess by him. He's going to kill both my princess as well as the tower. So far he's playing nearly flawlessly and that one mistake in the very beginning has set us up for a pretty bad time. But still never give up on a match even though things aren't looking too great. Let's drop the giant in the balloon. This time not going to screw it up like we did last time and take a look at these arrows. As soon as I play that balloon, look at these arrows gonna kill the minion horde before they even are able to spawn he drops the cry face because he knows he's in trouble the giant balloon have already locked onto the tower taking it out my balloon is completely full at max hp it's even going to go to the elixir collector and say goodbye to that and meanwhile my minions and my princess are also going to do damage look at that balloon even getting a shot up against that king tower my princess is going to kill his princess for a little bit of revenge i've got the giants or the barbarians in my hand and somehow this battle literally turned on its head in a matter of seconds so barbarians Barbarians are going to go down, expecting something that he plays. He's going to play the Dark Prince, so we're going to be able to cut that down and keep that princess alive. At this point, another set of prediction arrows to see that minion horde come out. Looks like it's not going to happen. He's going to give up, and somehow after losing my tower on the very first push of the game, we're going to pull out a three crown victory only two minutes in, and that one was honestly pretty sexy. Getting that minion horde with those arrows, one of the best feelings inside of Clash Royale, and I played a perfect one right there to give us 24 trophies and a pretty convincing win. So yeah, that is going to do it for this Giant Balloon video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys play Giant Balloon, if you have any tips, if you have any advice, any deck you like using with it, just drop it in the comment section below. I'll make sure to check it out. Uh, of course, make sure you guys follow me on Twitter at ChiefPat. But until next time, I will see you guys later. Peace!